one of you left a comment that really stuck with me. All the technology sounds great, but what features do you actually get at what price? And that's a fair question, because when it comes to the Tesla Model 2, we hear a lot about future tech and factory breakthroughs, but not enough about what actually shows up in your driveway for the money. Here, what often gets skipped. At a fixed price point, every feature Tesla adds comes with a trade-off somewhere else. Range, interior complexity, or long-term ownership costs. Those trade-offs are not exciting on paper, but they matter once you live with the car. So in today's video, we are not listing features like a brochure. We are asking what those features mean at the Model 2's expected price point. What do you gain in daily use? What do you quietly stop paying for? And which missing features might actually make this car easier and cheaper to live with? That is what we are breaking down. And if you're new here, this is Torque Element. We don't hype Tesla, we don't repeat press releases, and we don't explain things you already know. We focus on ownership logic. If that kind of breakdown helps you think more clearly about big decisions, subscribe and turn on notifications. Every new subscriber tells YouTube that calm, practical analysis still matters. Now let's get into the part of the Model 2 conversation that actually affects your wallet. At Tesla Model 2's target price, what are you actually paying for and what are you no longer paying for? When people hear Model 2, the first thing they picture is a cheap EV. Something in the $15,000 to $20,000 range that proves Tesla can win on price. But that framing misses the real point. Because a price like that is not a marketing message. It is a constraint, a hard ceiling. And once you accept that, you realize Tesla can't just add features until the car feels impressive. Tesla has to choose where the money goes and just as importantly, where it stops going. The clearest example is the battery. In an EV, the battery is not just the fuel tank. It is the largest cost component, the heaviest component, and the component most closely tied to long-term risk. Battery replacement quotes in the real world can be brutal, especially once you are outside warranty. And even if you never replace a battery, the idea of that risk affects resale value and insurance behavior. That is why the rumored pack size matters. The Model 2 rumors are pointing towards something like a low to mid 50s kilowatt hour pack with range that is useful, but not extravagant, not a 400 mile statement, something closer to the daily reality of what most people actually drive. And that design decision changes everything downstream. A smaller pack reduces raw cost. It reduces weight. It reduces the cooling requirement. It can reduce tire wear. It can reduce the energy you need per mile. And it can reduce the financial exposure that makes insurers nervous. None of those things show up in a spec sheet headline, but they show up in your monthly life. This is the first thing you are really paying for at that price point. A battery that is sized to be enough, not sized to win arguments on social media. Now let's talk about the trade that comes with it. Range versus value. Every extra mile of range above the useful zone costs Tesla real money because battery cost does not scale linearly in the way buyers assume. Pushing a car from about 250 miles of real world usefulness to about 350 miles often requires a much larger pack and a heavier vehicle. And that heavier vehicle then needs stronger suspension stronger brakes, and stronger cooling. So you do not just pay for a bigger battery, you pay for the ripple effects. At a tight target price, that means Tesla has two choices. Either chase max range and accept that the car becomes heavier, more complex, and more expensive to build, or aim for a range that fits daily life and put the savings into cost stability. Most people driving under 50 miles a day do not need extreme range. They need predictability. They need a car that does not punish them financially for normal life. And that brings us to the second major category you are paying for, whether Tesla says it out loud or not. Predictable ownership. 
That sounds vague, but it is not. It is fewer moving parts, less scheduled maintenance, no oil changes, no transmission services, no exhaust system, no timing belts, less brake wear because regenerative braking is doing most of the work in daily driving, fewer surprise repairs that show up once the car hits the six or seven year mark. On a mature budget, that matters more than features. But the real wild card in EV ownership has not been maintenance. It has been repairs and insurance. A lot of EVs have become cheaper to run and more expensive to fix. That is the paradox. So the question is not just whether the Model 2 is cheap to buy. The question is whether Tesla is trying to stabilize the variables that make ownership feel unpredictable. And that brings us to the factory, because the car you get is not just a design, it is a manufacturing output. If the Tesla Model 2 is cheaper, is it the car that changed, or the factory behind it? Up to this point, it is easy to assume Tesla's value comes from stripping the car down. Less this, less that, less luxury, less range, less everything. But that is not how Tesla wins long term. Tesla wins when the factory gets better. And the strongest signal about Model 2 is not a leaked option list. It is Tesla's obsession with structural simplification. Giga casting is the clearest example to understand. Replacing dozens of stamped and welded parts with a single large casting does not just reduce material. It removes labor. It removes alignment steps. It removes inspection points. It shortens the body's shop flow and makes the process more repeatable. And repeatability is not a nice to have. Repeatability is how you make a car that costs less without making it feel cheap. When a design is stable, the line can be tuned for one configuration. Robots do the same motion again and again. Scrap rates fall, rework falls, defects fall, and the cost per vehicle becomes predictable. That predictability is what eventually shows up as pricing flexibility, stronger incentives, or simply better value for the buyer without the company having to bleed margin. It also affects something buyers often miss. Used value. Used markets do not just price age and mileage, they price uncertainty. A vehicle that is hard to estimate, hard to repair, or hard to source parts for gets discounted because buyers fear the unknown. It does not matter how good the car is. Uncertainty becomes a tax. So when Tesla simplifies manufacturing, it is not only saving money at production. It is reducing uncertainty in how the vehicle will age. A simpler structure does not guarantee cheaper repairs in every crash scenario, but it can make repair outcomes easier to predict. And for most buyers, predictability is the real luxury. The same logic applies inside the cabin. A simplified interior is not automatically a downgrade. It is fewer parts, fewer failure points, fewer configuration errors, fewer unique components that become impossible to source years later. What many brands do is remove visible features and ask buyers to accept less. What Tesla often tries to do instead is remove friction from the build process so the car can stay simple without feeling like a compromise. That is what people mean when they say Tesla's advantage is the factory. So now the real question. If Model 2 sets a new cost baseline, what does that do to gas cars and used EVs? How does the Tesla Model 2 quietly break the cost logic of gas cars and used EVs. Let's start with gas cars, because this is where a lot of people still default. Gas vehicles have a predictable pattern. You pay for fuel, you pay for routine service, and eventually you pay for repairs that become more frequent as the car ages. Even if you drive less, many costs do not disappear. Time-based maintenance still happens, fluids still age, rubber still degrades, oil changes still come, and when something big fails, it is often expensive, even on an otherwise reliable car. With an EV, the maintenance schedule is simpler, but the fear has been different. 
Battery risk and repair risk. Used EV markets have been volatile because buyers are trying to price uncertainty. They are trying to guess battery health, future repair costs, and future software relevance. That is why you see strange pricing behavior or some used EVs hold value better than expected, while others drop fast even when they seem fine. Now imagine a new Tesla arrives with a smaller pack, a simpler architecture, and a factory process designed around repeatability. Even if it is not the longest range EV, it becomes a new reference point for what safe ownership math feels like. And the moment a new reference point becomes credible, the used market adjusts. Buyers start asking different questions. Why should I pay $22,000 for a three-year-old used EV if a new, simpler platform is near the same ownership equation? Why should I pay $19,000 for a used gas car that will definitely consume fuel and require service if an entry Tesla can reduce those costs and reduce surprise repairs. The Model 2 does not have to undercut everything on sticker price to change the market. It only has to stabilize the ownership equation. Because for cost-conscious buyers, especially older buyers, the risk is not missing out on a feature. The risk is buying something that feels safe today but looks outdated or financially exposed in a few years. If Model 2 reduces that fear, it changes buyer behavior. Waiting becomes rational. Negotiation becomes harder. Used listings sit longer. Prices soften. And this does not only impact EVs. It impacts gas cars in that 15 to 25,000 range because those buyers are not technology driven. They are risk-driven. So here is the trade you should think about. Would you trade extra range you rarely use for more predictable ownership costs? And if a car at this price point reduces uncertainty instead of adding features, does that change how you compare it to gas cars or used EVs? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if this breakdown helped you see the Model 2 differently, hit like, Subscribe to Torque Element and turn on notifications so you do not miss the next one. Because in the next video, we are going to map this entire idea into real ownership logic, what it means for your insurance exposure, your repair exposure, and your resale confidence. I will see you in the next one.